Hello everyone, now we will discuss on the topic advanced secondary processes part 1 and in this class we will discuss on sequential batch reactor, granular activated sludge process, membrane bioreactor and in this topic we will also discuss phytoremediation, phycoremediation and bioelectrochemical systems and microbial electrochemical cells. So, in the previous class we have discussed about the equipment used in the secondary processes and we have seen that activated sludge process is an important route or method which is used for secondary treatment for wastewater. So, we have made enough discussion on the conventional activated sludge process and we have seen that the main disadvantage of activated sludge process is that it requires larger floor area and it includes number of separate units like say aeration, then clarification, then decanter. So, number of units are needed to complete this process. So, people tried to develop advanced process as the modification of this activated sludge process or the advanced activated sludge process we can say. So, that is sequential batch reactor and granular activated sludge process and membrane bioreactor is other type of improvement in secondary treatment and phytoremediation is also a new concept although this is a very old process, but in engineered way these are being implemented in recent years. The living plants are used for the remediation of pollution and phycoremediation in this, in this area we will see that algae and microalgae are used for the treatment of wastewater. And bioelectrochemical systems and microbial electrochemical cells these are recently new advancements which are being investigated widely for the production of electricity and hydrogen along with the treatment of wastewater. So, we will discuss all this topic in this uh, module and this class we will be focusing on sequential batch reactor, granular activated sludge process and membrane bioreactor. So, as we have just mentioned that activated sludge process has some difficulty because of its large area requirement, floor area requirement. So, that can be reduced by using a new concept that is sequential batch reactor. So, unlike activated sludge process, one unit will be used in this process, but at with time the activities in the reactor will change. So, if we see the activated sludge process, the water gets entry into the aeration tank, then aeration takes place, then uh, reaction takes place, microbes degrade the organic compounds and then it is settled in the secondary clarifier and then decanter is used to separate the sludge from the treated water. But these different activities can be taking place in the same reactor in a batch mode. So, that, that is called sequential batch reactor different steps takes place in a sequential order. So, that is why it is a sequential batch reactor and you see a sequential batch reactor process is a fill and draw activated sludge system for the wastewater treatment. In this system wastewater is added to a single batch reactor treated to remove the undesirable constituents and then expelled. They differ from the continuous activated sludge plants because they combine all of the treatment steps and processes into single basin or tank whereas, continuous activated sludge plants rely on multiple basins and sequential batch reactor is no more than an activated sludge plant that operates in time rather than space. The term sequential batch reactor comes from sequence of steps the reactor goes through as it collects wastewater, treats it and then discharges it since all steps are conducted in a single tank. This process is similar in concept to a continuous flow activated sludge system, but the sequential batch reactor is a self 
contained system performing equalization, aeration and clarification in a single reactor. So, this has been written more systematically. Now, what are the sequences and what are the steps for sequential batch reactor? This slide gives us that idea. So, that is influent is coming into the reactor that is field stage and then reaction will take place that is react reaction stage, react stage and then settling of sludge and then decanting of it and then the reactor will be vacant. So, again it will be filled some, but some idle time is needed. So, that is the complete cycle of the operation of the sequential batch reactor and we see the steps the fill, react, settle, decant and idle and this fill step can be of different type like, like say static, mixed and aerated. Static means the waste water will enter into the reactor, but there will be no agitation, neither there will be any agitation nor oxygen will be supplied. So, that will be not full of oxygen and in the mixed phase we will be applying some mixing devices or arrangement, but no aeration will be made. So, that will be your an oxygen and a under aerated condition. So, air will be provided, air bubbles will be provided and then it will be aerobic condition. So, we can create different atmosphere in the reactor in terms of the availability of oxygen. Then the reaction will take place thereafter then settle then decant and again ideal. Okay. So, this is depending upon the mode of filling the reactor may be an in anoxic or in aerobic condition. Aerobic conditions means free oxygen is available, anoxic condition means free oxygen is not available, but bound oxygen may be available like say in terms of nitrate, nitrite etcetera. So, that can be available and that oxygen can be used by microorganism. So, that is anoxic conditions and aerobic condition basically an anaerobic condition is also will be available in the reactor that in, in case no oxygen will be available neither in free form nor in bound form. So, these are the different situations we can get and other things are there and in the draw stage we see we can get treated water and excess sludge we can get and again we can fill it here. So, that way the sequential batch reactor works and static field as you have mentioned that no mixing or aeration while the influent waste water is entering the tank. Static field is used during the initial startup phase of plants that do not need to nitrify or denitrify and during low flow periods to save power. So, that is the main objective to fill in a static condition at the initial stage. Then mixed field that mechanical mixers are used, but no aeration. The mixing action produces a uniform blend of influent waste water and biomass, anoxic condition is present which promotes denitrification. So, if oxygen is not present in, in free form, but it is in present in bound form as a nitrate and nitrite, then that oxygen can be taken up by the microorganisms and nitrate or nitrite will be converted to nitrogen and that is called denitrification process and under anaerobic conditions the biomass undergoes a release of phosphorus. So, this is the uniqueness of this condition and aerated field both aerators and the mechanical mixing units are activated anoxic zone is converted to aerobic zone by switching the oxygen on and off during this phase with blowers oxygen and anoxic conditions are created allowing for nitrification and denitrification. So, when we are providing oxygen then we will be getting nitrification, we are not providing oxygen, we will be getting denitrification. So, under the react phase no waste water enters the basin and the mechanical mixing and aeration units are on. Most of the carbonaceous biodegradable removal and further nitrification occurs in the react phase. The phosphorus released during mixed fill plus some additional phosphorus is taken up during the react phase. So, in anoxic condition phosphorus is released and then that is used in this case for the growth of the microorganisms. And on the settle phase activated sludge is allowed to settle under quiescent conditions, no flow enters the basin and no aeration and mixing takes place. The activated sludge tends to settle as a flocculent mass forming a distinctive 
interface with a clear supernatant. So, and then decanting will be taking place. A decanter is used to remove clear supernatant effluent. Once the settle phase is complete, a signal is sent to the decanter to initiate the opening of an effluent discharge valve. Then this idle step, this step occurs between decant and fill phase of next cycle. Idle idle time varies based on the influent flow rate and operating strategy and if we see the whole cycle then typical duration of one cycle is 4 to 6 hours for typical municipal waste water. And we will see that the treatment efficiency of this sequential batch reactor SBR depends on operating parameters like say phase duration or what is the cycle time and volume exchange ratio and then hydraulic retention time organic loading and then solid retention time, temperature, mixed liquor suspended solids, mixed liquor volatile suspended solids, dissolved oxygen and strength of waste water. And moreover during the react phase organic matters nitrogen and phosphorus removal may be achieved by adjusting aerobic, anoxing or anaerobic condition respectively. So, then how we will calculate the cycle time? So, cycle time the total cycle time will be T c is equal to T a plus T r plus T s plus T d plus T i, where T f is the fill time, T r is the react time, T s is the settle time, T d is the decant time and T i is the idle time. So, total time is your T c and this the react phase as you are talking about that that may be aerobic, anoxic and anaerobic. So, that way also you can calculate T r equal to T a e plus A x plus T a n. Now, we will see what is the volume exchange ratio. So, volume exchange ratio basically the ratio of the effluent going out from the reactor per cycle divided by the total volume of the reactor. So, due to filling and decanting phase during a cycle SBR operate with varying volume and volume exchange ratio for a cycle is defined as the volume of the effluent withdrawn in a cycle to total working volume of the reactor. Then hydraulic retention time another parameter. So, that can be defined as V t by q, where V t is the total working volume of the reactor and q is the daily waste water flow rate, but q is equal to what? V f into N c, N c is the number of cycles in a day and V f is the fill volume per cycle. So, if there are number of cycles, we will to multiply that number with the V f, so that will be the total flow per day. So, V t divided by q that will be our H r t and where N c is the number of cycles per day and defined as N c equal to 24 by T c. So, H r t can be V t into T c divided by 24 into V f and then solid retention time. So, solid retention time this can be defined as the you know that is solid mass present in the reactor and solid mass going out per day. So, that is V t into x divided by V w x w into N c, because this N c is the number of cycles in a day. So, V w into N c total volume into x w that is the microbial mass in the waste stream. So, this will be the waste stream. Now, if we replace this N c value as 24 by T c. So, S r t is equal to becoming V t x T c divided by 24 V w x w, where x is the MLSS in the reactor with full field and x w is the MLSS in the waste stream and V w is the waste sludge volume. Now, how the nitrogen is managed in SBR? Okay. So, we have seen that there may be anoxic and oxic conditions and anaerobic conditions. During aerobic condition, the nitrification takes place and in anoxic conditions denitrification takes place. So, what is the nitrification? That means, ammonia is converted to nitrite and nitrate. Okay. So, in the nitrification process ammonia is oxidized to nitrite by autotrophic bacteria called nitrosobacteria and generated nitrite is oxidized to nitrate by another group of autotrophic bacteria called nitrobacteria under aerobic conditions and using oxygen as the electron acceptor and these are the reactions. And 
Biological denitrification involves the biological oxidation of many organic substrates in waste water treatment using nitrate or nitrite as the electron acceptor under the anoxic condition or limited dissolved oxygen concentrations and nitrate is degraded to nitric oxide, nitrous oxide and nitrogen gas by following any of the two different routes so, may be ammonia to NO2 to NO3 or NO2 again NO, N2 O and N2 or NH4 plus to NO2 to NO, N2 O and N2 like this. So, that way the different sequence is followed and in this SBR have some advantages or benefits like say a higher degree of potential flexibility, effluent quality meets current and anticipated future nitrogen requirements for surface discharge, no separate clarifiers, significantly smaller footprint requires less site work on yard plumbing and lower initial capital cost, power consumption is typically less than that of the conventional plant with substantial power saving at lower flows and it has some limitation as well like a higher level of sophistication of timing units and control is required and then higher level of maintenance is required, potential of discharging floating or settled sludge during the draw or decant phases. Now, we will discuss about another advanced method or another advancement on the activated sludge process that is granular activated sludge process. So, in our activated sludge process in the conventional activated sludge process the microbes are used in a bulk phase, but here the microbes will be converted into granules and that due to that the granules in the granules the microbes will be more effective and the sludge will be very easily settled. So, this will be the advantage of granular activated sludge process. So, you see this process is the modification of the conventional activated sludge process to overcome various drawbacks including high capital cost, large land area the demand of two separate tanks, low biomass concentration and poor settling ability of the flux. Basically this uh, GSP or granular activated sludge process is the improved versions of the sequential batch reactor when the granulated biomass will be used. And this process is carried out in a sequential batch reactor accompanied by short settling time and aeration using a bubble column. It uses granules rather than flocks of microorganisms as used in the activated sludge process and granules help in providing different redox environments aerobic, anaerobic and anoxic within its structure for efficient waste water treatment. The activated granular sludge process technology first invented by the Delft University of Technology in Netherlands in 1997 and the Nerera technology is famous and developed by this university. The first full scale plant for industrial waste water constructed in 2005 while that for municipal sewage treatment plant constructed in 2009. And here we will see some comparison of activated sludge and granular sludge processes in terms of particle size used and particle size of the granules basically the microbial flux. So, here in activated sludge less than 0.1 millimeter, but in case of granular sludge it is greater than 0.1 millimeter. Microstructure dense and compact in case of granular sludge than activated sludge and then settling velocities much more in granular activated sludge and sludge volume index is also very less with respect to activated sludge process that means it will be very easily settleable than activated sludge process. SBI to measure the SBI normally 30 minutes settling is required, but here only 5 minutes is sufficient and micro environments it is in activated sludge it is not possible, but in granular sludge it is possible oxic, anoxic and anaerobic conditions are available in the granules. And these granules are defined as the aggregates of microbial origin which do not coagulate under reduced hydrodynamic shear and which subsequently settle significantly faster than activated sludge flux. These are self aggregation densely packed microbial biomass size 2 to 5 millimeter that varies physically, chemically and biologically from the flux thereby imparting excellent properties of the high efficiency waste water treatment. That means, in the granules different types of microbes will be available and will be effective in different zones like anoxic and aerobic and anaerobic zones. It allows an increase in biomass concentration that is generally 2 4 times 
compared to the standard activated sludge process. Also, it enables excellent biomass retention to easily handle the higher load of organic matter in the moist water. Granules depict higher settling properties with lower sludge volume index. In the case of activated granular sludge process SBI 5, that 5 minute settling time is used instead of the standard SBI 30. And enhanced settling properties permit the use of high hydraulic loads without the wash out of the biomass. And a study showed that the COD by N ratio should be low that is 2 to 5 as it leads to the formation of small dense and compact granules while higher COD by N ratio that is 7.5 to 30 is responsible for the formation of large and, and fluffy granules because of the growth of the heterotrophs. So, high COD by N ratio is not desirable for this technology and granules designed such that it enables the coexistence of the different niches that is aerobic, anaerobic and anoxic for simultaneous removal of organic carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, toxic substances and for simultaneous nitrification and denitrification processes. They are formed without the requirement of a carrier material or polymer as needed for other biomass materials like say in trickling filter or any other super rate trickling filters we have discussed that some solid material is used for the immobilization of the biomass, but in this case biomass and sludge they themselves produce the these granules, no external material is needed. And granules consist of layered structure and different types of microorganisms organize themselves among these layers for carrying out specific reactions. So, this is the granule say this is outer layer that is aerobic layer, the inner layer, anoxic layer and then innermost layer anaerobic core. So, different types of reactions will be taking place. So, this anaerobic, this anoxic zone is responsible for the denitrification and biological phosphorus removal and this zone is for nitrification and biological oxidation. Now, we see the this slide shows the photographs of conventional sludge and aerobic granulated sludge or granular sludge. So, you see the outer part of the granular structure is an aerobic layer, it allows the proliferation of the AOB that is ammonia oxidizing bacteria and heterotrophic aerobic microbes. It results in the degradation of organic matter and allows nitrification by AOB bacteria. The anoxic niche found in the granules inner core or middle layer that harbors the anamox bacteria that is facultative anaerobic microbes and DPAOs that is denitrifying phosphate accumulating bacteria. So, they facilitate the process of nitrification denitrification and the anaerobic layer formed in the innermost layer of the granule that helps in the growth of NOV that is nitrite oxidizing bacteria, PAOs, polyphosphate accumulating organisms and anaerobic microbes. So, these are the different zones, different types of microorganisms are available and different types of activities are going on. The granular process is the formation of granules by the interactions of the biotic, these are the biotic and abiotic factors that lead to self immobilization of the microorganisms without any supported carrier. And it is influenced by many factors like reaction conditions that is wastewater composition, microbial groups and it can be simplified into four steps that is cell to cell interactions. So, first the cell interacts then attachment of the microbes and formation of aggregates. Second step enhanced attachment by EPS, EPS is extracellular polymeric substance and shaping of granules in aerobic granulation and different factors which influence the initial stage of granulation that are hydrodynamic forces, diffusion, cell mobility, cell surface properties. Now, this figure shows us the different steps for the formation of granular activated sludge like say this is our microbial cells in the bulk phase. So, within 0 to 30 days the cells will be interact each other and there will be some cell cell additions and then micro aggregation will be there. So, this is the first step where this is mechanisms is proton translocation, surface charge neutralization, cell surface hydrophobicity and Van der Waals forces. So, after that 30 days to 30 to 60 days we will see here 
there are some EPS is formed. So, EPS that is your extracellular polymeric substances. So, this produces and makes more uh, maturation the granules is maturated and up to 30 to 60 days and then it if we allow more time say 60 to 200 days or more days. So, then we can get a matured granules which have 3 layers one is aerobic zone, anoxic zone and core zone with the dead cells that is your anaerobic zones. So, these are the different mechanisms for the effect of hydrodynamic forces air and water forms for this maturation and EPS synthesis formation of ionic bridges growth of immobilized biomass etcetera. And phosphorus and nitrogen removal in this case. So, efficient removal of phosphorus can be achieved in GSP along with nitrogen removal without the use of separate tertiary treatment. So, that is the beauty of this process and the key PAO that is phosphate accumulating organisms like candidatus accumulivector phosphatis is vital for the efficient biological removal of phosphorus and DPAOs denitrification phosphate accumulating organisms are found in the anoxic niche where the denitrification process takes place they use nitrite as the electron donor for the efficient removal of phosphorus and the phosphorus removal also depends on the COD concentration of the wastewater and PAOs accumulate phosphorus as polyphosphide and as long as the anoxic environment is maintained it does not release phosphorus in the environment that is accumulation of phosphorus takes place. Only in oxygenic phase that is in aerobic phase this oxygen will be this phosphorus will be released. The G in GSP the nitrogen removal efficiency is much higher than the activated sludge process as in ASP about 10 to 15 times recycle ratio is required to achieve 90 percent of the nitrogen removal. And this is your Nereda technology. So, the, the acquired Nereda technology based on the aerobic granular process for the treatment of high strength wastewater, it uses a single tank batch reactor for carrying out the treatment process. It is based on the principle of SBR bioreactor and comprises of three necessary steps that is simultaneous field draw phase, react phase and fast settling phase and the duration of the cycles depends on the wastewater characteristics, desired effluent properties, the sludge conversion rate and the settling time. So, these are the different steps already we have discussed. This is a uh, photographs taken from this source and this is, this indicates the Nereda technology and the this this figure shows the Nereda cycle. Now, we will see that there are certain parameters and stages of GSP and that can efficient the targets of the optimization of the process and these include granular size and structure, granular stability, reactor configuration, nitrogen removal, phosphorus removal, simultaneous biological nutrient removal and operational parameters lead to selection of microbes. The important parameters are type of substrate, food to microbe ratio, COD by nitrogen ratio, solids retention time, settling time, redox conditions. So, these operational parameters lead to the selection of microbes. Now, we will discuss on membrane bioreactor. So, this is another type of developed systems for secondary treatment. You see here microbes are used and at the same reactor at the, at the end of this reactor we are having another membrane also. So, biological degradation will take place and here it will be filtered and we will be getting the treated water. So, this is the membrane bioreactor it consists of suspended growth biological reactor combined with a membrane unit either located external to the bioreactor or mounted directly within the bioreactor. Okay. So, up to this in this class thank you very much for your patience.